boy, you guys. I've been excited for this one since I first saw the calendar way back in September. Yep, <laughs> it's time to talk about dental phobia, you guys. Now, I don't know. I'm not a humongous fan of going to the dentist. I wouldn't say I have a specific phobia about it, but I, I never enjoy going and laying there and getting my teeth poked and prodded. And if I flossed 18 times a day, they'd still tell me I need to floss more. Uh, I don't know. It's just not my favorite thing in the world. But that being said, I am very grateful to all the dentists out there that help keep my teeth happy and healthy. And even if I need to floss more, sure. And sometimes I have a cavity that needs filled. I'm grateful to these, uh, medical professionals for keeping my teeth safe because man, I don't want to lose them. Uh, if I can keep my teeth for a while <laughs> before I need dentures, I'd like that. Uh, so I think it's a pretty common thing to be kind of having a little bit of a, a fear of the dentist and the smart people out there who make horror movies and horror stories and whatever pick up on that. They understand that there's kind of this universal fear uh, or anxiety about the dentist and they exploit that. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Yes, dental horror. As you can see, our poor victim is uh, strapped down there with a bunch of metal in her mouth, keeping it open. Uh, there's nothing she can do. Uh, ramp up that fear of helplessness at the dentist to 11. And because today's theme is my dentist is a shape changer, this weirdo dentist goes from looking pretty normal on one side to a bizarre creature of some kind on the other. We're getting right into it, guys. The pencil drawing is wrapping up here. Uh, I'm going to go in with the inks first with the multi-liners because it's so complicated with all those little metal wires and straps and the drill bit and stuff like that. I kind of need to do it uh, this way first with the multi-liners uh, before I get into the coloring. But get into the coloring we shall. Uh, as you can see, I'm having a ton of fun putting in that weird metal contraption in this poor lady's mouth. <laughs> Ugh, this is like my, one of my nightmares. I don't want to have this happen. Speaking of which, fear about teeth, I think, is a very universal thing that goes back a long ways. Open up any kind of book on uh, dream interpretation, or what does my dream mean? And one of the first things you'll see is a common dream, dreams about your teeth falling out, or broken teeth, or something like that. Um, they wouldn't put that right up front if it wasn't super common. I guess when your teeth fall out in a dream, it means you're ang anxious about uh, like a loss of uh, power or like a big change or an embarrassment or something bad. I don't think there's any interpretation that says, oh, you lost your teeth in a dream. Good things are coming your way. But uh, I digress here. <laughs> you know, teeth are one of our uh, very important things we have on our body, but they're also kind of vulnerable. You know, one hockey puck to the face and uh, those bad boys are gone. You can't chew anything. You know, there's going to be lots of pain in your mouth and they don't grow back. So it's I can kind of understand that feeling of vulnerability there. Um, I also think one of the reasons we kind of have uh, dental fear or anxiety uh, is kind of when you're laying there on the table and they got these sharp, pokey instruments in your mouth, you can't do anything. Uh, so you kind of have to lay there and just trust the person that they know what they're doing and they're not going to like rip your teeth out or do any harm. So that feeling of helplessness too. Uh, and I try to ramp that up in this particular illustration, what with the uh, straps and that weird medical clamp. I look at a bunch of old dental equipment from like the 1800s to get an idea of what I wanted that, that face thing to look like. So hmm, lots of fun looking at that stuff. Ugh. Uh, in our fiction and movies and stuff, of course, dentistry pops in from time to time. On a lighthearted look, way back in 1932, W.C. Fields, weird funny man, uh, starting a short called The Dentist, where he's a dentist. And a wacky shenanigans ensue when he tries to pull a woman's painful tooth out, amongst other things. And uh, it's pretty fun and pretty funny, but uh, also kind of terrifying in a way. <laughs> Uh, in 1951, those those wacky boys, the Three Stooges, started in a short called The Tooth Will Out, where, of course, the Three Stooges become dentists, 
and uh, have to open up a practice and hilarity ensues. You can kind of guess what's happening. Uh, it's a Shemp episode, so if that's your cup of tea, definitely worth seeking out. Now let's jump up to 1976, where we've got uh, the movie Marathon Man. This is not really a horror movie, but a thriller. Uh, and in it, uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier plays an ex-Nazi dentist on the run, who's also got a sweet, sweet Assassin's Creed style uh, knife thing in his sleeve that when he rolls his hand back, it shoots a knife out. Pretty sweet. But anyway, he tortures Dustin Hoffman by drilling into his healthy teeth, continually asking, is it safe? Great scene terrifying. I love it. Also in 1976, we have the way, 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 way worse movie, Blood Sucking Freaks. Yes, the title alone should give it away. This is not, this is not high class cinema right here. Uh, but in it, amongst a bunch of other tortures that people endure uh, about some weird white slavery ring happening in New York amongst the artsy crowd, uh, one poor lady unfortunately has all her teeth ripped out by a dentist who then uh, drills with a, a, a cordless drill into her head, sticks a straw in and drinks her brains out via that. Yeah, it's that kind of movie. Five stars, well worth checking out. Uh, in 1986, the musical remake of The Little Shop of Horrors, starring Rick Moranis, came around. This has Steve Martin as Dr. Oren Shrivello as a wacky dentist. He even gets his own song and loves dishing out pain, and that's why he became a dentist. Uh, pretty great. And Bill Murray is his uh, pain-loving victim, uh, or patient, I should say. Pretty cool. In 1996, we have the epitome of dental horror with The Dentist. Yes, the Brian Yunza directed Corbin Burnson movie where he is Dr. Alan Finestone. After his wife starts having an affair, he goes banana wacky, uh, starts hallucinating and killing people. There's teeth mutilation. There's uh, injecting an air bubble into some lady's jugular vein. He kills a dog at some point. Uh, just bad stuff, ruins a whole bunch of teeth with dental implements, followed by a sequel in 1998. Uh, Old Boy in 2003 has our hero ripping out some guy's teeth with the back end of a claw hammer. It's good stuff. Let's take a look at the scan here, and let's get into the detail. I know you guys have been waiting for that. I decided to put some sweat drips and drool on this poor lady uh, with the um, white paint pen and uh, really wanted to make this guy look like he's kind of transforming clothes and all into this horrific weirdo monster with some tubes coming out of him and stuff. Very fun stuff. On one final note, if you haven't seen 2016's gothic chiller, A Cure for Wellness, highly recommend that. It's got a great dentistry scene in it. That's all I'm going to tell you guys. You should definitely check it out. And if you have it already, you should definitely schedule your uh, six-month checkup to get your teeth cleaned, especially after watching this video. Um, make an appointment, you guys. And nothing bad will happen. Trust me. All right, guys, that's it. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks to the Drawloween folks again. Uh, stay healthy and remember to floss. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.